Hi, I'm Jim Brown with a little amateur jerky video about sailing my old Sea Runner Trimaran Scrimshaw. This is the best that sailing gets. A dead run, wing and wing. Looks great. That was a great one. Reaching in light airs. Now that roller furling headsail operates as usual. The mainsail too, but the roller furling device on the headsail is homemade. It's functioned perfectly for over 20 years. And note that the furling line fastens to the pulpit and leads down along the pulpit back to the cockpit. We, we sometimes leave just a couple of turns of the Genoa rolled up to make the foot higher so you can see under it a little easier. If you're single-handing, you can actually steer the boat with your ankle. Put the helm down in order to, to tack by standing in the after hatchway. Note the position of the sailor standing up in the after hatchway. Up to the hips mm -hmm. in here and you can lean back against the hatch and be very secure. You can see forward where you're going and you can put your feet up on the foot, one foot up on the edge of the galley like so and get back here and really haul. Cranking the winches is also done while standing up and supported above the hips. None of this on your knees or twisting sideways to crank the winches. And the, old sheet ready. the tails of the sheets are dropped down the hatch all the way to the galley sole so that they will run free without tangles. Now let's tack the vessel using its autopilot instead of trying to steer the tiller with your ankles. We're working well to windward. We're doing, we got the boat moving well and close haul. And uh, if we push two of these buttons at once, the autopilot will put the helm down and return it to neutral with the ship on a course 90 degrees from the original heading. And notice that the head sail has to wrap around that roller on the baby stay. And now the autopilot will recover and put you on the new on the new tack but the vessel must be moving well and close hauled before starting this maneuver here she is sailing free with both sails sheeted to the uh, uh, to the leeward float stern i've got the mainsail as far out as i can get it and it's banged out to that cleat on the float stern. And so is the general. But this lubberly tactic is for light airs only. If there was any wind, you'd use the pad eye out there on the float stern. The mainsail vang actually goes straight down to the stanchion base and up to the secondary winch here in the left foreground. And on the other tack, the headsail vang goes back to a snatch block on that fitting at the float stern and up to the primary winch. 
Now the, the idea, idea when is reaching to sheet both sails as far both sails outboard as, far as possible, outboard as possible separate and them separate them as much as so possible. Let the air can get out from out between, between them, them as much as possible. It's a very useful tactic in light airs when off the wind. In fact, it's necessary for best performance in very light airs. Going to windward, note the space between the sail and the shroud. She's not to be sheeted any tighter than that in light airs. And she'll still go very close to windward. Here's a, a look at a, a very efficient sail plan. And particularly notice at the masthead, the angle of the wind vane, indicating that the vessel is proceeding on a very close heading in light airs with this sheeting arrangement. Because of her big, deep centerboard, she can do that. OK, so we're going to try to pull the centerboard down while sailing. Huh? And to do that, you've got to give the boat a quick luff. You've got to push the helm down so that the bow heads up into the wind until the sail just starts to luff. And then go back onto the old tack quickly and pull down hard on the centerboard pendant as we head back onto the, new, onto the old tack. Just as the sails begin to luff, you've got to put her back on to the old tack. Of course, it's a lot easier to get the board down if the boat's not moving. Okay, she's down. 